And ever since I've had the, the blessing of preaching full time, uh, I have made it a custom of mine to, to speak on the topic of apologetics at the beginning of every new year. And uh, I think I'll probably do you know, two or three sermons uh, regarding apologetics. And so this is the first one I'll, I'll do uh, this year. Uh, apologetics, if you've, ever heard, if you've never heard that term, it's not apologizing for our faith. It's not you know, feeling sorry for our faith in some way. This is a term which actually comes from, from the Bible, from the Greek language. And uh, we read this in 1 Peter 3.15. Sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you for a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. And so if you take the time to look up the word answer, in the original language it's the word apologia. And you can hear the word apology in there, right? Apologia, apology, and that's where we get the word uh, apology and apologetics. And the word apologia here in the original language, it means to give a defense, to give a reasoned argument, and as it's translated in the King James, to give an answer. And so Peter says we should always be, be ready to give an answer to those for the hope that we have in Jesus uh, Christ. And so I think the question, why do you believe in the Bible, or any kind of similar questions, uh, those are rather common. I think they're fair questions, and they deserve a, a fair answer. And so when someone comes to you as you know, you're living your life, and maybe someone close to you in your family or a friend or a neighbor, they ask you, why do you believe in the Bible? We should be prepared. You know, we don't have to go into a full-on you know, our Bible study, but we should at least be prepared to give them a, a meaningful answer. And I would like this morning's sermon really to be a preface for all future sermons that I deliver, uh, because the inspiration of the Bible is a foundational principle. And like I said before, really anything we do as Christians, it's really going to be meaningless, it's going to be in vain, if we do not believe the Bible is God's Word. Now think about this with me for a moment. How can you talk to someone about salvation? And God's plan for salvation through His Son, Jesus Christ, if a person doesn't believe in the Bible. Or if they're not even willing to entertain the idea that the Bible is God's Word. How can you talk to someone about worshiping in spirit and in truth and, and God's pattern for worship revealed to us in the New Testament? Again, if they don't believe in, in God's Word, if they don't believe the Bible is God's Word. How can we talk to someone about God's desires regarding moral issues? such as sexual ethics, the sanctity of marriage, abstaining from uh, drugs and alcohol and engaging in, in uh, sinful activities such as stealing from people and lying. Uh, just really, how can we talk to someone about living a life which is worthy of the gospel if, again, they do not believe the Bible is God's word, if it has no kind of authority or no kind of meaning for them in their life? And I can tell you from experience that any meaningful conversation cannot take place between two people regarding spiritual matters if you first do not establish that this book is our authority. This is what we need to go to because it is God's word. And if you don't first establish that with someone, you can you know, really just waste a whole day. You can waste a whole lot of time talking to people about things that they just really don't care about. They don't believe because they don't believe that the Bible is God's Word. And so regarding the Bible's inspiration, there are three points I would like us to focus on this morning. And we're, I'm really just scratching the surface with these three points. There's many other things we could consider. But this morning, <clears throat> I'd like us to consider, number one, the Bible claims to be God's Word. Number two, the preservation of the Bible. And number three, the scientific foreknowledge of the Bible. And it's my hope this morning that as I share these three points with you, that you can become better equipped to give an answer for the hope that you have in Jesus Christ. And when someone uh, you know, comes along and asks you a question like, why do you believe in the Bible? Again, you, you can provide them a meaningful uh, answer for them to, to think about. Maybe even point them uh, onto some things to, to study and consider if they are willing. <clears throat> 